Hello, everyone. We are going to wait and let everyone into the room. I hope you're having a great evening. Thank you all for being here. We'll give it a couple more minutes and then we'll start. Welcome, welcome, thank you for coming. We'll give it a couple more minutes so that we can let everyone come in the room. I hope you're having a fabulous evening and thank you for joining us. Okay, it is seven o'clock, so we will get started. Thank you all for being here and welcome to the University of Miami Pre-College 2024 Summer Scholars Program. Um, the purpose of this program is to give you all an overview of our upcoming Summer Scholars Program. We wanna provide you with some key information about the course structure and our fabulous faculty. And we want to have the opportunity to answer some of your lingering questions because we want you all to feel confident and informed about your decision. We have an amazing staff that support this effort. They work tirelessly to make each and every year of this program more special. I am Dr. Shante O'Neill. I'm the Assistant Dean for the Division of Continuing and International Education. And I am supported by an amazing staff. Like I said, most of you who have called or have emailed have been in contact with our enrollment advisors and our student assistants who also answer some of your questions. We also have on our staff about 60 or more community assistants and student staff from the University of Miami. So there are a lot of people who work very hard to put this program together and to make sure that it is top tier uh, summer scholars program for your students. The key contacts that you will be in touch with if you need support on our phone lines are the enrollment advisors, Carolina Desa, Yvette Borrell, and Sophia Ludwig. And always, if you have more questions, you can email us at precollege at miami.edu. During this presentation, I am going to answer most of the questions that you have. As well, there are answers to your questions on the website. We have disabled the chat feature because we want you to put your questions in the Q&A chat, and a member of our staff will try to get to your questions as soon as they possibly can. Please take the time to listen to this presentation. We wanna make sure that you get a good feel for the overall program and all of the key information. And at the end of the presentation, we will have some time for Carolina Desa to answer some of the most frequently asked questions that come from the chat. Also, I have listed here our enrollment advisor phone numbers. So if you wanna take a screenshot of this particular slide, please feel free to do so. All right, so let me give you an overview of what students should expect when they come to the University of Miami Summer Scholars Program. First of all, your, your children get to choose from a variety of academic tracks based on their interest. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about those tracks here in a little bit. They get to attend classes that are taught by our University of Miami faculty. And just for a fun fact, 90% of our faculty hold a terminal degree meaning that they have studied and researched at the highest level of their subject matter. These are the same professors that teach the courses here at the University of Miami. We do not rely on student teachers or adjunct professors. Our faculty spend their time designing these courses and experiences specifically for this program and for your students. You, your students will get to learn from student-centered curriculum they have the opportunity to earn college credits, six credits, or enroll in a non-credit experiential learning program. They get to form long-lasting relationships with high school students from all over the world, live on campus, commute, or learn remotely, and engage with the University of Miami and the pre-college community. 
So just to give you an overview of some of the programs in a day in the life of a Summer Scholars three-week credit program. It begins Saturday, June 29th and ends on Friday, July 19th. The morning courses are from 8.10 to 11.40 a.m. Lunch is from 11.40 to 1.10. And the afternoon session is from 1.10 to 4.40 p.m. This program is for current sophomores and juniors. They have the opportunity to earn six college credits, which is about two college courses. And there are 20 academic tracks to choose from. Those tracks consist of architecture, engineering, and technology. We have explorations in architecture and design, applications of medical, aerospace, civil, and architectural engineering, mobile app development with electrical and computer engineering, fintech, decoding cryptocurrency and blockchain tech, industrial and systems engineering, innovations in biomedical computer and electronic engineering. We also have our business law and global studies track. We have everything from business ethics and leadership. We have business strategy, communication and leadership, law, litigation and legal profession. We have sports administration, which is the business of sports. We have business of music. We also have global business and international relations as well as real estate. Exploration Sciences, our newest program, Stones and Bones, what archeology span teaches us about the world, Oce oceanography and marine environments, tropical marine biology and marine animal biology conservation. We have communication and media, which is digital media production and electronic media for the future, filmmaking and storytelling, exploring sports communication and culture, as well as our healthcare and medicine track, which is cancer biology, treatment management and prevention, microbiology, immunology and public health, music therapy and the brain, neuroscience and, pub and public health, and sports medicine, athletic performance and injury management. For those of you who will be enrolling in the UM Academies, the two week non-credit programs, a day in that life is begins on Janu uh, June 29th, Saturday, June 29th through Friday, July 12th. The morning session is from 9.15 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Lunch is from 11.30 to 1. And the afternoon session is from 1 to 3.15. And those academies are Business Academy, a crash course in entrepreneurship. Hurricane Academy, an introduction to atmospheric science and research. Spanish immersion crime scene investigation and forensic science academy, as well as criminal law, the intersection of race, class, and power. And then we have our remote UM Academy. We have Business Academy, a crash course in entrepreneur entrepreneurship. And this is where our students get the opportunity to learn synchronously with a UM instructor online. That program is also from June 29th to Thursday, July 11th. The morning course is from 9.30 to 12, break at 12 to 1, and the afternoon course is from 1 to 3. So just to reiterate, who is eligible for the UM pre-college? Our three-week three credit program is for sophomores and juniors that are currently sophomores and juniors. Our UM academies are for freshmen, sophomores, and juniors. Our application requirements are a grade point average of a 3.0, teacher recommendation form, school counselor recommendation form, an official high school transcript and a recent report card, and two essays. And if you could please take a look, I want to go over our application deadlines. Our early app early action application deadline was December 1, and those decisions have already gone out or they will go out in mid-February. We have a priority admission, which is February 1 today, and those decisions will go out early March or late March. Our international scholarship and regular application deadline is March 1. Those decisions will be released early April or late April. And then we have our general ap application, which will be deadlined on April 1st, and those decisions will go out in early May. I just want to kind of give a couple of little notes to help you all navigate through which application deadline you would like to apply for or which ones you need to apply for. 
we are operating on a set amount of seats for this program. And it is very important that you apply as quickly as possible. Submit all application supporting documents. Submit your deposit once you have been ex accepted. These seats in the classes will fill and spaces in this program do run out. Just as an important and essential piece of knowledge for students, when you look into your profile and you see that you're deficient for your teacher recommendation form or your counselor recommendation form, don't be afraid to go and visit that teacher and counselor and make certain that they submit their documents on your behalf because we don't want your documents to be caught up because they did not complete their portion of it. We wanna get you in and get you accepted as quickly as we possibly can. We do run out of seats. And so we wanna take this moment to just remind you that it is in your best interest to apply as quickly as possible, as well as submit all of your supporting documents. For those of you who will be submitting an application for a scholarship, you do have to submit both a traditional application as well as the application for the scholarship. I am gonna turn it over to uh, Zoe Fandora, who's gonna tell you a little bit more about student life. Hi everyone. So part of the UM Pre-College student is making sure that your students are not only taking classes, but also really getting to a feel for what it's like to be a college student. So that means that after class, we do have various activities going on to fully integrate them into the UM community. So after class, students might spend time working on class assignments, studying in groups alongside their classmates, visiting their faculty and TAs during office hours, and meeting with your staff mentor to make sure that you are staying on track. There are also tons of social activities that our team of CAs, which are community assistants, plan and host for all of the students. Those might involve study breaks, UM trivia with fun prizes, and movie nights so that students really feel like they're building that sense of community. We also have a lot of educational workshops that take place throughout the program. So we have undergraduate admissions information sessions where students can learn all about the application process for college, particularly UM, a college essay writing workshop where we have somebody come in and show you how to make your college essay really stand out, Q&A sessions with UM undergraduates. All of your community assistants are also UM undergraduates, so you have tons of time to ask them questions about their experience at the university, as well as campus tours, which are led by our UM students. Thank you, Zoe. So what, you, what should your students expect after completing the program? They gain confidence in their ability to succeed in college. They test their academic interests. They learn time management skills. They develop student and faculty relationships, mentor relationships. They learn about themselves, what they're looking for in a university or what is the right fit for them. They build lifetime, lifetime friendships, get acquainted with the U, of course. We also provide e-certificates upon completion of the program. E-certificates allows for your students to be able to start working on their entrance resumes for college, as well as they could put the e-certificate on their LinkedIn accounts. And obviously we want them to get excited about their upcoming college experience. On this slide, we have listed the tuition and program fees. Um, you're more than welcome to take a screenshot. These, this information is also available to you online. We have different costs for three-week credit program as well as our two-week non-credit program. Just to give you a little bit more information about those scholarship opportunities that we mentioned before, alumni of UM receive a $500 tuition waiver. We have our VISTA scholarship, which we utilize to broaden the number of traditionally underrepresented students and increases access to higher education for students from low-income families. That scholarship application deadline is March 1. There is a component which requires families to complete the CSS profile and upload required materials by March 1 as well. There is a merit tuition waiver which recognizes high school, high achieving high school sophomores and juniors with awards up to $500. Deadline is March 1. 
And then we have our tuition remission, which is available for employees of UM. It's available for eligible UM employees for the Summer Scholars three-week credit program. The benefit is applied to the tuition portion. Tuition remission does not cover program fees. And employees need to contact HR Benefit Administration for eligibility requirements. So just to go over those key facts that we want to make sure that you uh, recognize and write down, you can find this information, everything that I've kind of talked about today at miamiedu slash pre-college. Our scholarship deadline, our probably the best time for you to apply is by March 1, but we do have a general application deadline of April 1. All right, so I am going to turn it over to Carolina Desaw. She is one of our enrollment managers for the Pre-College Summer Scholars Program. There are some key questions that I'm sure she has seen in the Q&A chat, and I will allow her to give us a moment to answer some of those questions live and provide those answers for you. Carolina? Hi, everyone, welcome. So we did went through a few questions here. Um, in the chat, and if you, after this presentation, if you still have new questions, if still uh, something's not clear, you may add those to our Q&A. So Vista scholarship, the credits cannot be used towards enrollment. Does that mean I can't use those credits in college after scholarship? Uh, no, you can, Your the credits that you're gonna be earning in the program, it does not, um, your scholarship does not affect the credits that you will be uh, receiving in the program. Those, those things do not uh, collide. You apply for your scholarship. If you're granted a scholarship, wonderful. And you would have the same transcripts as every other student. So how are roommates selected? Okay, so we do uh, using a matching system to to set up the roommates you'd be answering the questionnaire and this would be more later on after we have all the all the decisions made of who would be attending the program uh, and if there is a person that you would like to room with and the person also uh, would like to room with you you may need to make sure to both parties communicate that to us uh, in different emails so then we can um, work to make that possible. Will my credits automatically be submitted to other universities that I apply? Can I choose not to share my credits with them? Um, well, I do not know, uh, I, you know. That, that's a complicated you know, answer. I, I can take that one. That's so, what I would say. <laughs> that's okay, Kato. <laughs> So what we want, upon the completion of your program, you will be able to request an official transcript. You are responsible to send that official transcript to whichever college you would like to receive credits from those courses for. Each college, the University of Miami, other universities, we have an equivalency system. And so each college will determine whether those courses are equivalent to courses that are at that university and will transfer in. University of Miami will transfer those credits in. However, we cannot speak to what other universities will accept. Most of our credits do transfer in at other universities across the country. However, that is their decision. Perfect. And uh, Shante, since you're talking about academics, would you say how big are the classes size for the programs? I would say most most of our classes are at a one to 25 ratio. Some of our classes are much smaller because of the nature of whatever the curriculum is. But I would say on average, one to 20, 25 is probably the biggest in most of our programs. Mm -hmm. We're a small private university. And so it's very comparable to what the class sizes are here at the University of Miami as an undergraduate student. Okay, so if we live on campus, so if you decided to uh, the option to be a resident on campus, are we allowed to leave the campus uh, to practice at the 
the high school, the local high school. Um, well, we do. If you choose to be a residential status program, you do not leave a camp. You're committing for this three weeks. Uh, if there's an emergency or anything that you really need to be done, it that will have to be prearranged and approved. Um, so we do. If there's something that you must do please communicate with us in advance and you should check if you already have commitments, maybe and you are local, maybe it, it will be a better idea for you to be a commuter instead of a residential. And I'll ask, I'll also add on that, um, model, you know, the, the program is very um, jam packed with experiences. And so we, we want to make sure that this is a true understanding and opportunity for your sons and daughters to be a part of this program and be engaged in this program. Um, at the same time, we're gonna have, we're gonna invite about 700 students to this campus, give or take, to be a part of this massive program. Um, we wanna make certain that everyone is safe, that we have an account for everyone at every moment. And so this, this program, unless you are a commuter, it is a stay on campus for the three week or two week duration program. Wonderful. And are our parents allowed to visit us on campuses? You don't, you don't leave campus. And yes, your parents are allowed to visit you on campus. Let me see here. Um, if you, this program, if you're a UM employer, yes, it is eligible for tuition uh, remission. We always advise if you uh, work at UM and you have benefits for you to contact the benefit experts and make sure that uh, you are eligible to, to use your, your benefits, but it does apply tuition remission. Okay, um, maybe uh, this will be for Zoe. Zoe, what are the activities uh, planned for the 4th of July? If you can have some idea, I don't know if they are all set right now, but do we have, uh, can you give some ideas of what happens for the 4th of July? Yeah, right now for 4th of July, we're looking to take our students to the Marlin Stadium to see a baseball game. Uh, so that would be during the day. We'll also be having various field days and game days going on for students who don't attend the baseball game. In the evening, we will be having a firework viewing party, so the students will be definitely occupied on the 4th of July, despite not having class. And the students will have class first thing the next morning, so we want to make sure that we have a lot of fun on the 4th of July, but be prepared for the next day of, of classes. So does UM offer transportation from and to the airport? Uh, yes, and this again, it's going to be something that's going to be explained with more detail uh closer to arrival date um and not closer to arrival date but when you're closer to you know with the student set and all this because we know that you have to arrange do all the flight arrangements but we're going to have a period of time the day of arrival and the day that uh, the summer camp the summer camp the summer scholars end with the shuttles that take them from from the airport into the back to the airport Okay, do students have to purchase a meal plan or it's covered in the tuition? We do offer uh, for the residential status students, they offer uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's just like a, a pre-college experience, how it would be in college. Um, and for those staying just as commuters, then they will be having lunch with us, is included in the tuition. Last one for dorms. Do dorms have private or communal bathrooms? Um, it's the bathroom, at least the ones that we've used before in terms of the dorms, they do have sort of the Jack and Jill, Jill type of uh, rooms and bathroom that will be two rooms and in the middle there is a bathroom. Um, so the student will be rooming with one person and then they both rooms, they're gonna be sharing one bathroom. This is uh, the dorms that we have used before. Okay. 
-hmm. Are the field trips costs included? In the residential status of the program, yes, the field trips are included, but there is an special field trip that you can see in the um, in our website for the marine biology only students. So that will be an extra cost. Commuters are also included in that as well. Oh, they commuters are also included. Awesome. So commuters are also included. Can we join teams while in programs such as a soccer team? Um, that will be, Zoe, can you explain a little bit more of like the activity? This will be an activity that we do, but not necessarily the UM team, um, but we for sure have uh, sports included uh, in terms of activities that you can be used on campus. What, what else in, on campus, Zoe, that can you say that they would have um, access to? Yeah, soccer is definitely popular. Uh, all students will have access to the wellness center. So through the wellness center, you can rent soccer balls, basketballs, they have indoor volleyball courts, an indoor swimming pool, all sorts of workout equipment. So a lot of students will use the wellness center to stay active and have their own sports tournaments. That is something that is very common among the students in the afternoon and on the weekend. And just to kind of reiterate, I, I'm not sure how that question um, read, but I, I do want to say this. I'm a former student athlete. I was an athlete in high school and I did have a uh, club teams that I was a participant in, participant in over the summer. However, this program is not designed for um, our students to be a part of a separate team. If you're a club um, participant, you run summer track, those things require you to be off campus or away from the site. And so that would not be allowed. But we do have, as they mentioned, several opportunities for you to work out, or be a part of a team while you're here on campus with the Summer Scholars Program. Um, and uh, these, uh, this, um, this info session, it's being recorded. And are we going to be sharing that later, later on, how they can have access to that? Yes, this, this will be recorded and be available on our um, Summer Scholars Program website. And they ask which dorm hall we credit students stay in. We do not have that set yet. Uh, this will be communicated uh, later on when we have our, our meeting with the students, then we are going to be communicating which dorms they're going to be staying in. It has not been finalized. Once we get students um, accepted and um, students have started to enroll, we get everyone enrolled in their courses. We will be releasing more information, more details. We'll also have up our student handbook and some other items that will be resources for you all to see. Okay, there, there is some other like questions that sometimes could be a repetitive questions and so, but I feel that many of those questions um, we are also going to be answered once after you apply and in the final uh, meeting in preparation to receive you to the program. Okay. Thank you, Carolina. We appreciate you. Again, Carolina, um, Yvette, and Sophia are our enrollment management team, part of our en enrollment management team, and they can, any questions that you didn't get answered, please feel free to, don't call them tonight, but you can call them tomorrow, and they will be happy to help you. You can always email us, precollege at miami.edu, and please look at our um, website. A lot of this information that we spoke about today is on that website and available for you. There's also a part of the website that has a Q&A section. So some of the other questions you might have are there as well. We appreciate you spending this evening with us. We hope that we were helpful in you making your decisions of whether you want to um, join us this summer. We are excited to receive your students and we are excited to give them the best opportunity we possibly can. Thank you for being here. We appreciate you. Have a good night.